Hi everybody, thanks so much for joining me today. We're gonna to be starting this on an 11 by 14 canvas, and you're gonna need one large blending brush of your choice just for creating the background. Here's uh, the colors we're gonna be using, and I'm gonna list them all below in the description. You'll need two kinds of reds, a light blue violet, titanium white, burnt umber, and black. I'm gonna take both white and light blue violet and just start pulling across the canvas and I want to concentrate on almost the middle of the canvas where the horizon is. We're going to put the horizon just below halfway and I'm going to add more blue there making it just a little bit deeper and richer in color. Now that we've got a nice base I'm going to take a little bit more of my blue and I'm going to add a line right where I want the horizon to be. So it's going to be just below halfway, the halfway mark. So I'm going to pull and slide my brush, trying to do this in one stroke. And then I'm going to blend my brush out a little bit below, creating soft little slopes and peaks and shadows and highlights in the foreground. Okay, it's time to start coming in with our trees now. You'll need a long liner brush, lots of water on your brush, and mix a bit of burnt umber with your light blue violet. Mix the two, and like I said, make sure you have a lot of water on your brush so that you can um, pull and flick and help that paint flow easily out of your brush. We'll paint a few different trees by pulling and flicking gently, wisping little short flicks to create all those little branches. Um, we don't want to have our trees too, too dark in this picture, so I'm not using any of my black, and I'm not using straight burnt umber either. I really like um, the tone. I got by taking a little bit of that uh, blue violet. It kind of makes the trees look really, really soft and almost um, one with the sky and the foreground. And it helps to uh, just draw our eyes into what we want the viewer to see, which is the red barn and also the lamppost in the foreground. So we'll just create a few more trees here and then we'll move on and add um, a few little lines just for an old leaning little fence. After just tapping and dabbing and just kind of softening with my finger, I'm going to add a few little um, flicks with my brush here, little lines for either some little wispy looking branches or some tall grass. And here we go in and like on an angle coming from the side from the far right, we're going to just add a few little crooked. They don't have to be perfectly straight. They're leaning. This is an old fence. This is going to add character, character to our painting. So don't worry about making everything even and perfect it always just adds character when you have something leaning or crooked in your painting and i'm taking the same colors i use for my trees and then i'm going to come in with thick amounts of white so it looks like that snow is really 3d and you're just gonna and i'm using heavy bodied acrylics today so it really helps to create that 3d look if you want to use thick paint um, kind of just to create that textured uh, look in your paintings and I'm not using any water on my brush when I'm applying the white. So I'm gonna add a few little hints here and there on the trees for a little bit of snow as well. And then a shadow on um, the right side of these little fence posts. Again, just using my blue and my burnt umber and then pulling and flicking that little uh, line through boards or wire that connect all those little posts. I'm gonna make a little shadow at the base of some of these um, fence posts and just sort of soften that with either a brush or my finger.
And I'm just going to take a little bit of a bigger brush now, switching from my liner brush to either a flat brush or a filbert brush. You can use either one. We just want to create a soft hint of texture and leaves and snow up on these treetops and some at the base as well. Wherever you guys want, like I said, you can add as much snow as you want. Uh, it's up to you how much uh, white you want to add and how bright you want your snow to look. Um, it, this painting um, will look nice either way, so it's completely up to you guys. Go ahead and add as much as you want. Now, I've washed my brush off, and I'm taking my scarlet red and a little bit of black, and I'm going to begin this barn. So I'm going to um, put it on an angle. So this really puts this barn on the angle it is, so you have to kind of go up. It's a rectangle I'm making here. And I'm just doing this freehand. It's really easy, guys. I recommend and um, advise you guys to approach your paintings freehand or sketch it out first, but I'm not crazy about traceables. I like to um, teach you guys how to do it, give you inspiration, motivation, and make you more of a confident painter. And I know you guys can do this. Um, so I'm just painting a rectangle on an angle like this. And this is kind of similar to the angle of our bridge that we painted. Um, with the truck going through and the Christmas tree in the back. So I'm going to do my shadows with black and sometimes I'm adding a little bit of red. So that's another thing. It's up to you how deep you want your shadows to be, how much of a contrast that you want. And then in some areas of the boards um, on this barn, I'm just using straight red. I'm painting wet on wet. So the colors are kind of always um, picking up one another and that helps to really make your structure and um, color blending look really natural. Now, because this barn is far away, you don't have to worry about painting every single board. We're not gonna see that. You're not gonna have to worry about spacing everything out evenly either. It's just an old barn and this is the back view of the barn so we're not going to see the doors but there is going to be a tiny little window up in the loft and you'll see how I do that. Just very simple. If you have a little flat brush it makes it a lot easier to um, paint the lines and the for structures and buildings. Um, and we're going to add just a few little windows, faint suggestion of them off to the side, a little bit of white down on the bottom for the rest of the building and then come in with our same colors here. We'll be adding a few more lines that go across so the boards go vertical straight up and down and then there's some lines that go horizontal so you'll see that. We'll just continue along here leaving some patches of um, white and blue down at the bottom. So I'm coming in with some shadows now, not washing my brush off. I've always got a little bit of red in there with my black. So I'm going to define these lines a little bit. So there's another line that goes on an angle, right? Because of how this barn is situated, the, um, the angle, the position of it, we can see a little bit of the side. So the top of the roof is narrower, but it's like a long, skinny rectangle. And then I'm going to come in with more of my red and then black where I want to have that shadow right underneath the roof line. This having your shadows will make your structures look 3D. So it's really, really important to um, uh, not paint everything all the same color. If you don't have any shadows or highlights, your paintings will look very, very flat. So I'm going to join those, the ends of the roof line, and just add a line from one point all the way across to the other. I'm just going to make the roof line a little bit longer there on the right. I'm going to paint the roof with titanium white right after I finish on this side. I'm just going to even out these lines a little bit more. And 
and I'm going to go up and down pulling for some shadows and the indication of some boards. Again, not worrying or fussing about keeping them really even. I'm going to come in with my brighter red. So I'm using um, a few different reds today. I've got crimson red, I've got scarlet red. I'm not using any of my neon red. I wanted this to be a little bit richer and a little bit more subdued. So um, you definitely don't need any neon paints today for this. I'm going to come in with a corner of my brush now, a little bit of my blue, and just add a little dab here and there for the inside of the window, and then a few little dabs here along the bottom. And then some more little lines right on the far side just for um, where we have some more windows older windows or little openings there we can't really see them but it's kind of nice just to have a little bit of a few little lines and and shapes going on there to let us know something's something's over there so now I'm going to come in with thick titanium white on the end of my brush and I'm going to just lightly pull and drag I'm going to outline softly, bring some white in front. That will help set that uh, barn in the background. So it's nice to do that after you're finished your structure is just come in with a fresh clean coat of paint. Make sure that that's in front of the base of the barn. And then I'm going to take more white and I'm going to finish this other side of the roof. And I'm using quite a uh, lot of paint to do this i really really like the way it looks um kind of textured like and it kind of pops off the canvas So what I'm doing here is just coming in with a little bit of my light blue violet and trying to match the color of the background, leaving just a hint of that soft white glow on the outside of the walls. And I'm going to just add a little bit more red in here now, not washing my brush out. I've got a bit of that blue in there and just make this a little bit longer on the end, maybe a little bit straighter. I'm not going to worry too much about uh, making it uh, completely straight. And then I'm going to come in with a little bit of light blue, a uh, light blue violet here for a subtle shadow for the lines on the tin on the roof. And then more snow. And I'm using titanium white. That's my preferred choice of white. It's nice and bright. And I'll have a full list of colors below in the description. And I'm going to finish off the end here by adding another thick ridge of paint. A few more little lines and dabs for this side where we've got some windows. And just play around with your barn. Make it your own, guys. If you want to add more windows, if you want to add a, uh, the doors in the front, make the make it the front this is the back of the barn and I kind of like this 
I like that it doesn't have um, the doors, but you can definitely do that. Make it your own, do what you want with it. Um, I'm just here to offer suggestions and hopefully inspire you guys. I'm gonna come in with some more white now. As the paint sets in and dries, uh, it can look a little bit darker. So I'm gonna come in and add a little bit more white. I don't want it to be completely even in the front. I wanna leave a little bit of that blue showing through. So we've got those subtle um, highlights and shadows. So taking both of my reds now, I'm gonna apply some highlights very thinly, just very little pressure, just pulling and see how much it just pops out. Now I got a little bit of my light blue violet in there, but I think that looks kind of cool. I'm just gonna leave that. I like those colors together. You can see how, how beautiful they complement each other in this painting, the red with that light blue violet. I was originally just going to do a grayscale first and then just come in with um, the red barn or the red for the color. Um, but I really love um, light blue violet with red. So I thought this might be something nice to show you guys for a combination. Of course, you can do yours in black and white as well. So I'm just going to fine tune my shadow areas here a little bit more and add a little bit more detail with my red and kind of just going back and forth here, just kind of finishing everything off nicely, making sure I have uh, a nice edge to my roof line and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, we're just about ready to start our lamp post. I'm just coming over with thin layers of shadow colors, which are my light blue violet, maybe even a little bit of burnt umber and black in there. It's very, very light. And now we're gonna start our lamp post. So I'm using uh, black burnt umber and my blue. We're gonna just pull a thick line. You can make your lamp post as tall as you want, and you can make yours black if you want. It's totally up to you guys. I wanted mine to look um, like the colors of the trees in the background, a little bit less um, burnt umber, of course, and have it look a little bit frosty. So it's going to be this kind of light blue grayish color with hints of white for a frosty look. We're going to do a little skinny line on the top and then a little half circle or a little dome. Actually, it looks like a little hat. So right there on the top, you'll make like a little hat and then add a few little dabs and then a tiny little line. I love painting lamp posts. I've painted a lot this year in my paintings. I think they just really add a sense of comfort and they're hopeful, you know, when life is kind of dark and 
you just look for some light or comfort somewhere a lamppost can do that i i don't know what it is about them but i really enjoy painting them and adding them in my paintings wherever i can and i'm just going to do a few little lines here on an angle making it narrower at the bottom and a little bit wider at the top and i'll add a little bit more color where I want it to be darker so in this case I'm, I am adding a little bit of black a little bit more of my black to my blue just for a few areas for more contrast and then balancing out with a deep gray inside and then a little bit of light blue violet and white for that frosty look I'm going to add some white inside the lamppost now to begin our light. I'm going to tap it with my finger lightly to make it look sort of fuzzy and, and glowing. And then add a few little taps and dabs for some snow on that um, snow or light. It could be um, the light hitting it on those little lines. And the color I'm going to be using for my light is um, a neon, my luminous yellow. I think I said earlier that you're not going to need any neons. <laughs> I lied. Um, I really, really love using the luminous neon yellow for um, all of my lights and um, interior, like in cabins or cottages, my lampposts, lanterns, even fires. I always, in my paintings, uh, use that luminous warm yellow if you guys don't have it no problem at all just use a little bit of yellow and a little bit of orange and white and you'll still get a really nice soft glow um, to your light um, but it is a whole bean luminous heavy body neon acrylics I'll try to remember to leave a link down below in the description if you guys are interested in um, finding them they're a really nice uh, brand of paint to use and I'm going to come in here on the top with a smaller brush now and just add some highlights, more highlights and shadows, defining a few of these lines. I'm just going to finish up the base here and we're going to start adding our wreath a pretty wreath with a little scoop i'm using a little round brush here a little scoop of sap green or hooker's green or hunter green with even with a little bit of my black so i'm applying the paint by tapping and almost like little stipples to make it look 3d and like it's thick so this will give you that textured look and make it look 3D. And already I just love the way this looks. There's just something about a wreath as well. It's just so festive and Christmassy. And I'm taking a bit of white with my green now to add some frosty or snow uh, covered leaves on this wreath. Just little taps. I'm painting wet on wet so I definitely don't want to tap too much in one spot. Otherwise I'm going to lose my highlights and everything's just going to be all the same color. And then I decided to wrap it around, give it a twisted garland wrapping around the lamp post, which I think um, adds a little bit more character to this painting as well. And I really, really like this. Um, you don't have to do this though. If you guys just wanna paint the wreath, you can leave it like that. It looks just fine. I'm gonna be adding some red for um, maybe some poinsettia flowers or some berries. I'll be making a little ribbon on the wreath. Uh, again, using both of those reds, the brightest for where I want my highlights to be. So I've got a clean brush now. I'm going into my neon luminous yellow and white. And now that the um, lamp post has had time to dry off, I'm gonna add my bright colors here for the light. And I'm gonna just soften, adding a little bit of it on the outside and just taking my finger and softly blending that around to give it that glow, that nice, warm, soft glow. And then dab some more inside. And then right in the very center, I'll be adding uh, the brightest where the light is the little light bulb is and it's going to be titanium white i'm just going to add a little hint of the reflection of the light down the lamp post as well 
and you can actually add it below um, at the base of your lamp post if you want on the snow that would look nice too and then I'm going to come in with my um, light blue violet and do some little shadows and faint lines so we can still see uh, those little lines in the lamp post. Okay, so let's start our bow now. We're just going to do like two triangles, keep it really simple, a little triangle on either side. So it gets narrower and pointy towards the center, and then we'll do two little ends of our, our ribbon. Super easy, guys. And then a little dab of the bright, bright red in the center so it really shows up. And then a little bit of the brightest red, um, a few little lines of that inside. So it kind of looks 3D, but we don't have to worry too much about um, details. It's kind of uh, a little bit far away, but we just need a little bit to know that it's a bow and um, and then a few little flowers if you want, or uh, you could even have some little lights in your garland. You can have um, some Christmas ornaments. Just be creative and uh, make it your own. I'm adding little poinsettia flowers, so I'm just gently pushing and then letting off to make them look pointy on the ends of them. And then I'm going to dab a little bit of my uh, light green here. I've got a lighter green that I'm using here to add just a, a different type of a green, a little bit brighter than I can't make this with the sap green and the white, it's not the same. So this one's just called pale green. Um, it's a nice color. You could even take a little bit of turquoise, that would look pretty too. So I'll just finish this up by adding a little bit more highlights and shadows and snow to my fence. And while I finish this up, and I just want to say thanks so much for joining me today and throughout this whole month of December in 2020. Um, we've been having so much fun together painting all these winter landscapes and I love seeing all of your versions on our uh, Facebook group. If anybody here is watching and they want to join the Facebook group, it's private so you have to request to join. And I'll leave a link below at the bottom as well as for Patreon where you can get one-on-one -on -one advice, um, painting critiques, uh, giveaways early access to videos, extra videos. I've got so much on there. That's a lot of fun too. So I want to wish you guys a Merry Christmas. Have a wonderful day. Happy painting. And I'll see you next time soon in another video. Bye everybody.